Hello, shameless writers. For today's vlog, we'll be talking about how I stay healthy while working a desk job. It's something I've recently become passionate about because I've always been a sedentary person, but in the last year, I've been working exclusively from home. When I worked in the office, I had to drive to work, walk from the garage to the office, walk upstairs, walk to go out to lunch, etc. But once I started working from home, none of that was necessary. Don't worry, I'm not complaining. As an introvert, this is my dream come true. But health-wise, there were some effects. One of them was a resurgence of depression. The other was a systemic breakdown of every joint and muscle in what seemed to be a planned mutiny. But really, it was just the effect of being almost completely stationary for prolonged periods of time. Luckily, I listened to the Creative Pen channel, run by indie author J.F. Penn, and she plugged her book, The Healthy Writer. Now, I've been listening to her podcast for years now, and though I don't read her fiction, I was really excited when she came out with this nonfiction book. She had a lot of excellent tips targeted exclusively at writers, but really, many of them can be applied to anybody who works a sedentary job, especially those whose work travels with them via their devices, aka the always-on culture. Now, I know there are a lot of videos about mental health since everyone really seems to love talking about how screwed up they are. This is not that. This video is about protecting your physical health and your emotional health. This means I'm not gonna be talking about any mental illnesses or conditions that would benefit from seeing a health professional. This video is about the prevention of illness, injury, and isolation. I am here to keep you out of the doctor's office. Specifically, I'd like to spare you the humiliation of calling your friend and asking her to drive you to the ER in a snowstorm because you seemingly can't manage to navigate the stairs without your weak muscles giving out on you. Thank you, Angel. So let's start off with protecting your physical health. Before we get started, let me just get something right out of the way. I am not strong or athletic, even though I look like I am. I'm tall, I have linebacker shoulders, and I have a deep pitched voice. These qualities, along with my past military service, somehow convinces literally everybody that I am some kind of a badass, or at the very least, I can throw a mean fastball. But the truth is, I got out of the Marines after three years, not four like I was supposed to, three years, because of multiple serious injuries. From the moment I joined, everything stopped working. My ankles, my knees, my shin tendons, my groin muscles, and finally my back. They all gave out on me. And keep in mind, I was 17 when I joined and 20 when I got out. Being a Marine is very physically taxing and simply I wasn't up to it, tallness and refrigerator-like shoulders notwithstanding. My propensity towards injury continues to this day, I'm sorry to say. And if anything, as I'm creeping slowly towards 40, <laughs> it's getting worse. So how have I started protecting my physical health? Obviously, I'm not doing the rappel towers anymore, so that helps. But I'm also properly decking out my office to prevent injuries and strain. Let's start with my setup. My monitors are provided by my day job, and I'm really not techy enough to know or care about brand names or pixels. I seriously don't care, so please don't fill out my comments with commentary about the ideal pixel level. Ugh. It's a screen, it's big, and it helps me look at multiple things at the same time. I really don't care about anything else. But I do care about having my screens at eye level and having sufficient desk space for my planner. Yes, I changed it up again, sort of. I still have the Erin Condren, but I really miss the customizability of the Happy Planner, so I put my Life Planner in an A5 binder. I have planner piece for now, but we'll see what happens in a few months. Anyway, I keep my screens where I want them by using a monitor stand. It's pretty universal and it makes a huge difference on how much desk space I have available. It's also adjustable, which means that if for some reason I decide to sit lower in my seat, I can move the monitors with me. In addition to having the monitors at eye level, I also use blue filter glasses. Now I have 20-20 vision, which makes me pretty lucky, and I don't yet need reading glasses. However, by the evening, I feel like I have sand in my eyes. So in addition to using good old fashioned Visine, I also use these blue filter glasses. The blue light of screens is terrible for us. I imagine you probably have read an article or two on the internet about it. Ironically, you've probably read it on your phone. 
Blue light is why newer phones have dark mode and night mode, which gives off orange light instead of blue, which doesn't disrupt your sleep. Since I started using these glasses, I don't have blurry vision at the end of the day, and I have fewer headaches. It's definitely one of the better ways I've chosen to spend 30 bucks. Getting away from my eyesight, if you work on a computer, you know what carpal tunnel syndrome is. But what you may not know is that you don't actually get it from typing. Carpal tunnel is a repetitive motion injury, but most people don't get it from a keyboard, they get it from the mouse. Yes, the mouse. So to protect against carpal tunnel while using a desktop, sometimes for as much as 12 hours at a time, using a trackball mouse is a good way to go. If you use a laptop and you have the trackpad, then that's also a good way. But for me, especially needing to compare documents, a desktop is really the way I need to go. And as such, I need a mouse instead of a trackpad. Now, when I say I prefer this trackball mouse, what I mean is this is the only mouse I will ever use and you will have to pry it from my cold, dead hands. To emphasize the point, at my last job where I had to work in an office, they told me I couldn't bring in my own mouse to use on the company computer. You know what else they told me? They wouldn't buy me the mouse of my choice. I had to use their stupid mouse. Well, guess which rebellious employee went ahead and did it anyway? Oh yeah, I'm dangerous like that. Seriously though, I've been using this mouse since 2008. It's wired as most mouses are not anymore these days, but I don't care. I love this mouse and I'll use it until I'm dead. There, I said it. Traveling downward, I also use a footrest. This is more of a personal preference based largely on the fact that I had back surgery at the age of 20. For those of you who have had low back problems, you know the importance of keeping your feet flat on the floor to support your back. Footrests come in a variety of styles, and the most popular ones are hard, flat, and tilt to your needs. I chose a soft one simply because it feels better on my feet, but a warning for those of you who are larger. I weigh 170 pounds, and after a few hours, this footrest dents quite a bit. It goes back to its original shape, but if you're heavier than 170 or simply have heavy legs, you might want to go with the hard plastic model that keeps your posture steady throughout the day. Last and definitely the most important physical aspect of your workspace is get a good chair. If you're gonna skimp on anything, let it not be your chair. Now the chair that I use, okay, look, this bad boy was expensive. It was a thousand dollars, not kidding. But like I said, I spend up to 12 hours in this chair and if I have a deadline looming, I usually don't get the chance to get up and walk around every hour like you're supposed to. This was the chair that my last day job used throughout their workstations, and I loved it so much that when I left, I asked our facilities manager for the model number. Like I said, it's expensive, and I actually had to put it on my Amazon card and carry the balance for a few months, but I've never regretted it. My days of Charlie horses coming up in my calves are over. Those are so awful. If you've never had a Charlie horse in your calf, consider yourself lucky. Now I understand if you can't just whip out $1,000 for a chair, but regardless of which chair you use when you're at a computer, please use the armrests. In addition to having your work set up properly for ergonomics, you also need to protect your physical health with movement and exercise. Walking is always the best option to start off with. Being outside is incredibly restorative, even if the weather isn't exactly perfect. But you can also work out indoors if you choose workouts wisely. I am a huge fan of Fitness Blender, which has an enormous library of completely free workouts right here on YouTube at a variety of intensity levels. I will warn you, however, that they are super fond of burpees, and if you're like me and you have low blood pressure, um, those aren't ideal. No one likes vomit on the carpet. If you are working out indoors and you can't spring for your own treadmill, a good tool to have is a 30-pound bar especially if you're like me and you're not quite in a good place to start using your husband's Smith machine just yet. The best thing about having the 30 pound bar is if you live in an apartment or other small space, you can still have this piece of workout equipment and pair it with plates or ankle weights for various exercises and, and it still doesn't take up a lot of space in your house. When it comes to protecting your emotional health, that's a lot more individual to your own needs and situation. But there are some generalities. One step that I've taken recently, and based on my Facebook friends, I know I'm not the only one, 
is I've stepped back from the amount of news commentary I've been consuming, and I've been replacing it with soothing music and podcasts. Even if you use the news as background noise, all of that yelling, people cutting each other off, and the snide mic drop comments, these all have an effect on your psyche and your ability to concentrate. Now granted, this is mostly for the US. I know news in other countries is actually news instead of ruddy-faced quote-unquote commentators screaming at each other. So if you live in one of those countries where news is dry and boring and dispassionate, as it should be, then feel free to ignore this bit of advice. Audiobooks, music, and podcasts are much better for your state of mind, and they can be played from your phone, your PC, or your smart home device like Amazon Echo. Just choose your ambient noise wisely, as it's easy to type the wrong word if you're listening to a story while you type an email. I say it's easy because I once sent an email with an entire sentence from the Jay Shetty podcast instead of the business matter I was actually composing the email about. It makes me feel better to believe other people do this too. If you can, sit near a window or a glass door. I know if you are in an office, you don't get to choose where you sit, especially if you're in a cube farm. No one likes fluorescent lights, except of course the people who build office buildings. The thing about natural light is even if you're in an urban high rise and you think that the parking lot view from your window doesn't do any good, it really does. Natural light and fresh air still have a positive effect on your mental health, which is probably why seasonal affective disorder is a thing. You also need to build in time away from your computer. Take a break and spend a little time with someone you like. This could be a quick call to your friend, playing with your dog, or, or Skyping with your child while they're at the babysitters. Everyone's life is different, but we all need to connect with those that we love throughout the day. Isolating yourself because you're just so busy is a really terrible long-term strategy. So make time for your family and your squad, even if it just means walking around the building while your friend smokes. And finally, take a whole day, if you can, just to veg. Spend your time doing something where you can recline, preferably something that doesn't strain your eyes. If you're reading, let it be a proper book or an e-ink device like a classic Kindle. My preference is to listen to an audiobook or a podcast, something that lasts for at least an hour so I'm not constantly looking for what to listen to next. If you still have a DVD player, then pop in your Animaniacs collection and just chill. Kids, if you don't know what Animaniacs is, go and find one of your parents and beat them with a stick or a spatula. I assure you, they deserve it. Of course, if you're a parent or have extrovert family members, a whole day usually isn't practical, but try to block off at least a few hours for yourself. Your mental health just might depend on it. The internet and pundits are really fond of saying that sitting is the new smoking. And maybe they're right, or maybe they're just exaggerating. I really couldn't say. What I do know is that if you're not careful, having a sedentary job can really affect your health, both physically and emotionally. Now, of course, these steps aren't going to change your life, they're not going to change your outlook, and they're definitely not going to find you your dream job. But what they can do is help you stay healthy while you're in your current job and allow you to remain at peak optimization so in addition to doing your actual work, you still have some creative energy left at the end of the day to do something you actually want to do. At least it's had that effect on me. Those are just my tips. Now just about everything that I've mentioned, at least the physical aspects, is listed below. These are things that I've actually owned for more than a year and actually use, and they are things that I actually recommend. Of course, I do keep things on my desk that I didn't recommend because, you know, not everything's a good use of money, let's be honest. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share on your social media of choice. And until next week, take care and write well. Yeah.